The movie begins with a wedding where Kenya and a man are about to say their vows when an alarm rings, causing chaos. Kenya wakes up, revealing it was a dream, and starts her day with a morning walk. On her way to the office, Leah calls out to Kenya, distressed about the wedding dresses Berte sent her. Kenya advises Leah to wear the dress she loves since it's her wedding day. Leah mentions a potential match for Kenya, a newly single architect named Brian, but Kenya declines, stating she doesn't do blind dates. At the office, Kenya meets a man waiting for her. She reviews the letter of intent from the banker and answers his questions, clarifying that she is the senior manager. Later, Kenya and her three friends have a gathering. Kenya makes a toast, and they all wish each other a happy Valentine's Day. The conversation shifts to relationships, with Cheryl mentioning that 42.4% of black women have never been married, sparking a discussion about finding love. The next morning, Kenya is walking in a neighborhood when Dr. Brockton calls her from behind and introduces her to his friends. He invites her to sit with them, but she declines, mentioning she has somewhere to be. He warns her about the dangers of internet blind dates, and they exchange pleasantries before she continues on her way. Kenya goes to Starbucks to meet the blind date Leah set up. A man named Brian Kelly approaches her, and they realize they are each other's date. Despite initial awkwardness, they sit down, but Kenya soon feels uncomfortable and leaves, citing a busy week. Later, Kenya attends a wedding with Cheryl and vents about the blind date. She meets Mrs. Cahan, compliments her house and landscaping, and mentions she just bought her own house. Mrs. Cahan introduces Kenya to her landscaper, who turns out to be Brian from the blind date. Kenya is surprised, thinking he was an architect. Brian clarifies he's a landscape architect. Mrs. Cahan suggests Brian help with Kenya's new house, and despite Kenya's initial reluctance, she agrees. Mrs. Cahan then excuses herself. After Mrs. Cahan left, Kenya told Brian she had a small backyard and a limited budget. Brian assured her that small projects were fine and gave her his card, saying to call if she was ready. The next day, Brian came to Kenya's house with his dog, but Kenya asked him to keep the dog outside due to her concern about fur. Brian agreed and assessed her backyard, noting she needed his help. He suggested a fountain as the focal point, which Kenya liked but worried about the cost. Brian reassured her they could make it work. Brian offered to show Kenya a project he just completed. Despite her busy schedule, she agreed, and they went to the site. While there, Kenya screamed, thinking there was a spider on her hair, but Brian calmed her down and drove her home. Kenya worried Brian might think she was a freak, but he reassured her. He offered to draw up a proposal and told her to call with any questions. Kenya said she needed time due to her mortgage, and Brian assured her there was no pressure. The next morning at the office, Edwin introduced Kenya to Bill Labrie, who offered his help on the Pino account. Kenya assigned him tasks, and Edwin reassured her about the importance of the account, hinting that her performance could lead to a partnership. Kenya confidently accepted the challenge. As they wrapped up, a messenger delivered a package for Kenya. Curious, Darren asked if it was her birthday, but Kenya replied that it was from her new landscaper. Brian started working in Kenya's backyard. When his dog tried to get inside, Kenya pushed it away. She asked Brian when he thought the project would be done. Brian replied that they had only been there two days and joked if she was already sick of them. Kenya explained that she was thinking of having a housewarming party once the work was completed. Noticing her stress, Brian pointed out she was wearing a suit on a Saturday. Kenya explained she had to go to work because she was up for a partnership. Brian congratulated her. As Kenya was watching Brian work, she was suddenly startled by her brother, Nelson, and his girlfriend, Stacy, causing her to scream. Kenya was introduced to Stacy. Nelson handed Kenya money for their mom's birthday. Nelson joked about Kenya not informing him about the landscaping. She introduced Brian to Nelson. Nelson then teased Kenya about going on a blind date with a white guy, which she defensively explained was a mistake. Stacy admired Kenya's new house and asked to use the bathroom. Kenya agreed and then Stacy offered unsolicited advice on how Kenya could catch a man, including getting a good nutritionist. Kenya politely thanked her. Kenya and Brian went out to choose flowers for her backyard. Brian shared that his love for plants came from his dad's gardening. After college, he worked as a copywriter, but eventually pursued landscaping. They selected a plant for ground cover, and Kenya agreed it looked good. That night, Kenya had dinner with her parents and Nelson, who brought his new girlfriend, Kiki. Nelson teased Kenya about dating white boys. Kenya clarified it was just one blind date, and she ended up hiring him as her landscaper. The family was surprised, 
But Kenya admitted Brian was nice, and they enjoyed working together. After dinner, they watched a ballet performance. Back at home, Kenya invited Brian for dinner. He suggested adding color to her beige decor for more energy. Kenya explained her mother's dislike for bright colors, but Brian encouraged her to explore her preferences. They discussed their dating preferences. With Kenya preferring black men and Brian sharing, he dated all kinds of women. As it got late, Brian offered to help clean up, but Kenya declined. They agreed to see each other the next day. The next morning, Brian told Kenya he let the workers go early for the holiday and invited her to go hiking. Initially reluctant, Kenya lost a coin toss and agreed. It started raining, and they found shelter in a shed where they shared a kiss. Later, at home, they kissed again and spent the night together. The next morning, they talked about Kenya's name and childhood. Brian learned she was born in Kenya and had asthma, leading to her dislike of the outdoors. Brian asked about her hair and discovered it was a weave which upset Kenya. She ended things by telling Brian she no longer needed his landscaping services. Brian left, frustrated and apologizing for offending her. Kenya told her friends about the night with Brian. They were surprised and curious about the details. Kenya admitted he was good, but said it was over and she had fired him. Her friends argued that she didn't need to marry him, just enjoy herself for once. Kenya then went to the salon and got her weave removed. Back at home, Brian came by to collect his things, but Kenya asked him to stay. They made up and started dating. Brian and Kenya went on a double date with Cheryl and her boyfriend, Walter. They enjoyed talking and dancing together. During the evening, a comedian, Somor joined them and made a racist joke about Brian. Brian finished the landscaping and showed Kenya, who loved it and thanked him. Later, Kenya prepared a housewarming party, inviting friends and family. Her parents initially thought Brian was just a landscaper, but Kenya clarified that he was now her friend. Nelson arrived with a new girlfriend, Luna, and excitedly introduced her to Kenya. Nelson enthusiastically announced that he had found a potential husband for Kenya, his law school mentor, who had just moved into town. Nelson revealed that he had invited the man to the party. The man, Mark Harper, arrived with a plant and introduced himself, thanking Kenya for letting him join the party. Mark and Kenya exchanged pleasantries, with Mark mentioning he had relocated from Phoenix and was looking for a place. Nelson praised Kenya's knowledge of the area, suggesting she could help Mark. They tentatively planned to connect the following week. Brian, curious about Mark, asked Kenya who he was, and she explained he was a friend of Nelson. After the party, Brian and Kenya sat looking at pictures from a black high society event. Brian suggested they attend, even though it conflicted with the community garden party he had planned to attend. Kenya hesitated, saying she might skip it this year. Brian asked if her hesitation was because of him. Kenya admitted she didn't think they would be comfortable there. The next morning at her office, Edwin approached Kenya to apologize for the difficult situation with Jack Pino, acknowledging Jack's challenging behavior. Brian and Kenya were shopping in a supermarket when Kenya vented about her work frustrations, calling the men there white men. Brian asked if they could avoid discussing race for the night, leading to a tense exchange. Kenya argued that as a black woman, she's constantly reminded of her race, while Brian, as a white man, isn't. She expressed her frustrations about being underestimated at work. Because of her race, Brian acknowledged her achievements and admitted he couldn't fully understand her experience. He suggested the people bothering her were irrelevant to their relationship, but Kenya insisted her experiences were integral to who she is. Feeling they couldn't reconcile their differences, Brian suggested their relationship might not work, and Kenya agreed. Kenya went with Mark to help him get a house. Then they went out for dinner. He asked about her career and if she was seeing anyone. She said she was not seeing anyone. The next day, Brian showed up at Kenya's house, apologizing for not calling first. He admitted he felt stupid for not supporting her and wanted to be there for her, promising to empathize even if he couldn't always relate. He expressed his love for her. Kenya revealed she had met someone else with whom she had more in common. Hurt, Brian said it was okay, and they were just hanging out. He told her not to worry about the landscaping payment and left with his dog, Max, saying goodbye. Kenya started dating Mark. One day, they attended a wedding where Kenya saw Brian with another woman. They greeted each other, and Brian revealed he had gotten back with his ex. Later, Kenya's asthma was triggered, and her friends tried to comfort her suggesting she was jealous of Brian. They reassured her that Mark was better for her and she should forget about Brian. Kenya and Mark had dinner with her parents 
Nelson and his girlfriend, and Cheryl and Walter. Mark shared the story of how he and Kenya met. On the way back, Mark complimented a picture of her with long hair and tried to kiss her. But Kenya got out of the car. He followed her, saying she could take her time. But she told him she couldn't do this. Kenya then visited Cheryl and Walter, expressing her frustration. They advised her to follow her heart. The next morning, Kenya attended a meeting and recommended against the Pino Group acquiring Net Worth Consolidated. She refused to manipulate the numbers to make the company look good. When asked to leave the room so they could talk to Jack alone, she agreed. Edwin came to Kenya's office and praised her for her performance in the meeting. He commended her for showing guts, smarts, and integrity, saying that her good judgment had prevented the firm from making a big mistake. Kenya and her family attended a wedding where Cheryl announced her engagement, making everyone happy. Kenya made fun of the brides, which angered her mother, leading to an argument. Upset, Kenya went to the bathroom, and her father followed to comfort her. He advised her to do something about Brian, recognizing that she loved him, and shared a story about his relationship with her mother. Kenya hugged her father, and then ran out to find Brian, borrowing Nelson's car. She drove to a restaurant Brian frequented, but he wasn't there. Feeling devastated, she sat alone until Brian's dog, Max, approached her. Petting Max, she soon saw Brian and approached him. Kenya admitted to Brian that she could be combative, neurotic, and picky, but with him, she felt she could be herself and wanted a life of adventure together. She told him they were meant to be and that dreams could change, confessing her love for him. Brian reciprocated, saying he had never stopped loving her, and they kissed. Kenya took Brian back to the wedding, where they joined the celebration and danced together. The movie concluded with Kenya and Brian's wedding, surrounded by their family and friends who gathered for a group photo. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.